Well, that was a good power nap. Wonder where I ended up this time. Uh, are you friendly? Racist! Sometimes you want to bring a little more variety to your RimWorld experience beyond your normal human bonds, what with their squishy bodies and desires for tables to eat on. But what races should you add to your playthroughs? This list will compose of 10 races and why you should include them, and tips on how to utilize them properly. Also, do note there are plenty of races that aren't in this list, so post your comments down below of any good races we missed this episode, and maybe we can make a follow-up of things that can kill me and my pawns. Uh, before we begin, maybe listen about our sponsor while we get all this cleaned up. Monster Legends is a free-to-play game for Android and iOS with our special download link in the description below. I've been playing it for a few days and I can say it is definitely addicting. One of my favorite parts of the game has been monster breeding. You can take two powerful monsters and combine them to get one super powerful monster. Feeding monsters is pretty entertaining too. When you run out of food, you can always get more from your farms. After you finish feeding your monsters, you can prep them for battle. This game has PvP and dungeons and an adventure map. You can fight your friends too. The game has new events each week to keep the game fresh and exciting with new adventures and things to discover. Download the game through the link in the description to get these free rewards worth $18, 50,000 food, one Thunder Nyx monster and 300,000 gold. Wait, kill me and my pawns? Not again! Ugh. If you like this kind of content, remember to like and subscribe. Seriously, YouTube algorithms are cooler than some of the modded storytellers. Go away. We'll talk about you in a later video. Go, shoo. Right, Android Tears by Atlas with a random Kiwi. Adding and maintaining the mod. Do you like machines? Do you wish your colonists will shut up about their pathetic existence? Do you wish you could reenact the Terminator? Do you want to live with the homicidal super powerful Android? This mod provides you the ability to recruit or even craft with the right technology, tiers, of robotic pawns with the first tiers being soulless machines who just live to serve all the way to fifth tiers hating everything but themselves. Of course, there is more to this mod than just pawns. You can make robotic farm animals. Who can make supplies for your colony? With the Android Tiers DX expansion mod, you can make Terminator units or fight them. You also have the ability to upload your colonists' minds into surrogates or into the cloud. Now you can use the robots to keep your colonists out of harm's way. Some of the other benefits is that while lower tiers aren't as good as higher tiers, they won't have mood issues. The higher the tier, the more human they will become, as implied earlier the fifth tier. Android by Church Juice while not as big as the Android Tiers mod, don't let that fool you. This mod can still give you some fun. This mod will provide you with three types of pawns. First is your basic droid pawn, who you can find kits in shops to assemble yourself. They can't gain any skills, but their base skills are good enough that they will fit into just about any role in your colony. Just make sure you have a power supply for them. They can and will die without power. Next is the battle droid. Not for labor, but combat. If you need another hand to deal with the oncoming tribal raid and you don't have a chinchilla horde to swarm them, this might be enough to turn the tide. Finally, the actual android. They act like normal pawns with a few exceptions. They tend to have better endurance of elements and once you have the right technology, you can customize your own android and make it yourself. Though be warned, the cost for some of the more game-breaking bonus features for androids can be very costly. Oh, and do be careful of the black box edition. Any droid with one when they die will go out in an antimatter blaze of glory. And did I mention, sometimes enemy or ally androids have this? Yeah, have fun. Next, we have Logan's and Arachne races. Logan, made by Zen, but continued by Millie. Wait, him again? Guess he really is busy bringing back races. While the Arachne races is made by Moronic, you might be wondering why I'm putting these two together. One important trait, regeneration. Both of these races' key features is their ability to regenerate wounds. The Logans are a Wolverine race who have different tiers of regeneration, not unlike a copyrighted Marvel character. And each tier will bestow a different rate and power of regeneration with one helping with fixing your wounds, to X quite literally having your pawn reenact that scene in Dragon Ball Z with Piccolo. 
This makes higher tiered Logans much easier to take care of combat wise as they can heal their wounds even without resting and without any medicine, saving you time and resources. Now the Arachne races are a bit different. While the Logan have tiers of healing ability, the Arachne have one set level, meaning they can and will keep fighting and fighting while healing. Definitely scary when you made them angry. However, there is a big weakness to them. They hate heat. That's right, if you have one in the colony, you will have to take better care of her, otherwise she will always be upset for being in the heat. And while they like animals, they don't garden very well, nor are very good social-wise. Must be the fact they are giant spiders, but the jury is out on that one. But they are also good at handling the cold and toxic fallout, but keep in mind they also are psychically more sensitive, and given they also are good at melee fighting, let's hope they don't get a berserk mental break. Though, as an added benefit, you could have a cyber spider due to having more legs. Really, both races are good, especially if you are looking for more candidates to act as melee walls and defenses. Although, thinking about combat, that reminds me of another kind of warrior race. Thrombonians, originally by Nahari, and now taken care of by Terrigen, take a thrombo, make it humanoid, now give it good base stats. And also give it a berserker's rage. That's the Thrombonians in a nutshell. Thrombonians are a tribal race who can be both a blessing and a curse upon your land. They are strong, tend to have good traits, and in combat are easily worth five other counters. But that's the problem. This is a faction that you should go out of your way to keep happy because otherwise you will have angry furries at your door. And you don't want angry furries at your door. Trust me, you don't want angry furries at your door. There is also the fact they are worth a lot of money, wealth-wise, but their stats and combative prowess might be worth Randy deciding to send you harder raids. It's all up to you in the end. <laughs> Moving on to the next race. Of course, today we are focusing on the Predator race and why you want them in your colony. First off, they are stronger and faster than humans. Sure, they do prefer warmer climates, but this is easily done for them but something else they want to hunt. Yes, predators want to hunt prey, which allows them to blood themselves or lore-wise mark their kills on themselves. Normally in the lore, it would only be the acid blood of a xenomorph, but mechanically here it can be any living thing. There is even a whole mechanic that has certain animals, even modded ones, to have a level, meaning if your blood higher, you will get more joy. Also, I should mention that if you have a predator in your colony, you can have it mock your non-predator colonist kills. It's definitely a good reward for going out of your way to hunt those dangerous beasts. Really, you can't go wrong with this mod, and if you want to only play with predators or xenomorphs, there is a good mod option to turn on or off any aspects of the mod, so you don't have to worry about those HR Geiger. It can't be a list of good races without talking about one of the more famous ones from Jexcel. The Rim of Madness, Vampire, and Werewolves, both revived by John and Kato and Millie. Either one is a great addition to your game, if you are looking for overpowered pawns with major caveats. They are monsters after all. Fun fact, they are based on the abilities of vampires and werewolves of the World of Darkness and the Vampire the Masquerade with a bit of lore and abilities from some of the other World of Darkness spin-offs. Meaning their abilities can be familiar to you if you are a fan. Vampires naturally drink blood, are resistant to normal weaponry, and of course burn in sunlight like bacon. They also can drain other vampires to improve their own strength. But what about werewolves? Well, they are big furry monsters who are tough to kill and tougher to keep under the control of a full moon. They don't like silver, so I recommend getting a machining table up and use the silver treatment to make sure your weapons can actually hurt them. Other than that, both of these races use similar leveling up and skill systems. On from something monstrous to something more... more alien. Crystalloids raised by Atomic Ravioli, which, as you might guess by the name, are a race of crystal beings. They are divided into two sub-races, the normal Crystalloids and the Valkyries, both characterized by better toxic sensitivity, long lives, and extremely psionic, though for that last one, be warned about mental breaks as both of them are far worse mental thresholds. Using crystals, you can make special guns, generators that use psionic energies to power your base and even construct creators. Now I can save a chinchilla swarms with my own personal Crystal Zerg Rush. 
This mod does a good job being a race mod, cool concept, very fun research, and can fit in plenty of playthroughs. I recommend Bend It for sci-fi playthroughs for sure. As I've mentioned before, there are plenty of games that are like Rimworld, one of which being Kenshi. But what if you want to bring your Kenshi playthrough to the rim? Now you can with Shapiro Dressman's Kenshi mod list. Now you can have any of these lovely pods helping out in your colony. Uh, yeah, so the Shex is slightly slower than normal humans in laboring or movement, but in return for that, they have their own natural defenses, making them great for holding the line. The Hivers are an insectoid-like race who, um... It would appear there isn't much info on the Steam page about what exactly they can do, but what I do know, Kenshi-wise, is they aren't the strongest of the species, but they can swarm you. Word to the wise, stay out of the fogland. Finally, the skeletons, the mechanized pawns, who don't eat much and possibly could use some oil for their joints. Naturally being robotic, they have their bit of natural defenses and their own biology medical-wise, but they are in essence a normal pawn. Oh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the Kenshi Armory mod by Gemi Nigan, which provides plenty of well-done Kenshi arms and armor for your Kenshi races. You always have to look part for these sort of things, you know? You have to look the part. Alrighty, one last time, I'm going to tell you all about today's sponsors, Monster Legends. We wouldn't be able to bring you new videos every week if it weren't for our sponsors. So do them a solid and check out the link in the description below. Monster Legends is a really fun game. I've been playing it a lot over the last few days and I've really, really enjoyed myself. It reminds me of the good old days when we played Pokemon on the Game Boy. Pokemon Red, anyone? Who still has it? Tell me in the description down below who still has Pokemon Red. If you download the game with the link below, you'll get a bunch of free stuff including 300,000 gold, a Fire Nix, 50,000 food, what are you waiting for? It's free stuff. It's worth $18, apparently. So many races, and the thing is, they aren't the only ones. There are plenty of different race mods for you to choose, so like I said earlier, post a comment any good race mods we missed, and we might be able to make a follow-up episode to this. I want to thank all Patreon supporters and any and all comments, even you, Ted. Now click on another video.